This year, the people of Chicago won a historic victory, reparations for police torture. To learn more, we spoke with two people that helped lead the campaign, torture survivor Daryl Cannon and civil rights lawyer Joey Mogul. Well, my, my hellish nightmare started November the 2nd, 1983, uh, when a, a group of all-white detectives invaded my apartment and during the day of uh, November the 2nd. These uh, particular detectives uh, did despicable things to me um, that no human being should have to undergo. My hellish nightmare continued for another 24 years. Since then, it's been my mission to right the wrongs that they have done with other guys who are still in prison. And because of that, I continue to speak out about the atrocities that happened to me and to others as well uh, in hopes that they too someday will get a fair and impartial hearing. Please state your name uh, for the record and uh, share with the members of the committee any comments you might have on this matter. My name is Daryl Cannon and I'm a survivor of having been tortured. The Burge torture cases, otherwise known as the Chicago police torture cases, involve the torture of over 100 African-American men and women and Chicago South Side. The torture was led by former police commander John Burge and other white detectives under his command. His reign of terror lasted for two decades from 1972 to 1991. The torture included electrically shocking people with an electric shock box and cattle prods on their genitals, ears, and lips. It included uh, using garbage bags or typewriter covers and putting it over people's heads and then kicking and punching them in the chest or stomach, forcing them to breathe out and then suck that bag in, realizing that they could have no air and that they were going to suffocate. Several individuals talk about being beaten with telephone books or blackjacks or other rubber devices that inflict severe physical pain, but like most torture tactics, leave no physical marks. And all of this torture was committed in order to extract confessions. And those confessions were then used against people in their criminal cases to wrongfully convict them, and in the case of 11, send them to Illinois' notorious death row. The torture was also very explicitly racially motivated. Almost all of the detectives who engaged in it were white. Almost all of the victims were black. A few were Latino. And the detectives throughout the interrogations called people racial epithets, racist slurs, and engaged in racist terrorism to not only inflict severe uh, intimidation and um, pain into the individuals who were being interrogated, but to intimidate their families as well as African-American communities. And I must admit, when I first heard the word reparations in association with the John Verge case, uh, I was apprehensive. You know, I was wondering, could this ever come about, especially here in Chicago? The reparations ordinance asked for financial compensation for the Burge torture survivors because for so many of them, while they had complained about the torture decades ago, they were unable to sue because they were facing criminal charges at the time. And now their statute of limitations has expired. So they had no legal recourse whatsoever to get financial compensation or any other redress. So we, one thing we were demanding was financial compensation. We were also demanding that there be a psychological counseling center built on the south side of Chicago. Because we all recognize that torture inflicts um, heinous psychological scars that never go away. Now, I cry not because I hurt. I cry because I'm mad. <laughs> I'm still mad today because of what happened to me. And I'll stay mad. Can't no one tell me to forgive, forget, or anything else because you do not expect for people that have a badge to treat you in that manner. Part of the reparations package was also seeking um, free enrollment in Chicago City Colleges, recognizing that the torture didn't just impact the torture survivors and their family members, but their grandchildren as well, and that this torture and the harm it inflicts has a legacy that continues to this day. 
Further, um, we sought that the, the reparations package and um, provide teaching about the Burge torture cases in Chicago public schools because we wanted to create this public narrative that really described these torture cases as well as the struggle for justice. And we thought that was important to memorialize and to teach about in, in, in to our, um, our, our youth. And finally, we asked for a permanent public memorial, the creation of that in Chicago. Again, to document and make this history permanent and to create a public narrative that accurately described what occurred here. We have some victims of torture here today and their families, and if they would rise when I call their names, Daryl Cannon, Anthony Holmes, Prince Mundutti, Mirren Diggins, Mark Clemens, Ronnie Kitchen, and Carolyn Johnson, the mother of torture survivor, Marcus Wiggins. Thank you for your your leadership. Thank you for continuing to fight, even though you out here, you're, you've been out. You're fighting for those that are still in and for those that are still suffering. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The reparations ordinance in Chicago is the first time we've ever had reparations for law enforcement violence in, from, um, given by a city throughout the nation. And I believe it's, my, it's the first time we've ever had redress provided that was in fact called by statute reparations. And I think that's a huge victory in and of itself.